So guys, today we've got a very different kind of smartphone. This is the Ukitel K10,000 Pro, and it's one of the most fascinating phones I've ever taken a look at. But can it compete in the intensively competitive smartphone market? We're gonna find out in this review. I'm Mr. Who's the Boss, and let's get started. So the first thing that will probably strike you is, this is not a particularly expensive phone. At quite a bit under $200, it's nowhere near in the same league as phones like the Galaxy S8 and even the OnePlus 5. Having said that, it's interesting to know that there are basically no compromises when it comes to the build. This is one solid, solid phone. On top of that, it's got quite a unique design language. It strays away from this sort of sleek smoothness that smartphones tend to be going towards, and it's actually instead got lots of jagged lines, lots of interlocking shapes, and it's really interesting. So on the back, we've actually got this fake leather finish, which I'm not the biggest fan of. It's not terrible by any means, but it's a bit confusing considering the smartphone this is replacing, the normal K10,000, seems to have a nicer flush metal finish. And to address the quite literal elephant in the room, this phone is absolutely gigantic. At just over 14 millimeters thick, it's essentially twice the thickness of a lot of current flagships. At 291 grams, it could probably injure you if you drop it on your face. But that's not to say it's bad, it's actually strangely comfortable to hold, but admittedly it's not gonna be for everyone's hands. So what's the reason for this size? Essentially, this thing houses a 10,000 milliamp hour battery. I'll let that sink in for a moment. 10,000 mAh, guys, to put in perspective, is more than three times the size of the battery in the Galaxy S8. And what this means is 20 plus hours of screen on time, or weeks if you left it on standby. So it's nice to see that the display has also been upgraded. We've moved from a 720p screen to now a 1080p panel. But of course, with a 5.5 inch screen size, that's hardly anything to run home about. It's not a bad screen by any means, the viewing angles turned out surprisingly good, and color reproduction is, whilst not particularly vivid, quite natural and accurate. But nonetheless, this is not gonna make people go wow. And as you can also tell, it's a bit of a long shot from the bezel of screens we've been seeing. Taking a listen to the speakers, it's becoming apparent that this is not primarily a media consumption device. Unfortunately, whilst it looks like this too, there is only a mono speaker, it's pretty poorly positioned, almost always firing at the floor, and it distorts a slightly louder volumes. It's not the worst I've heard, but it's pretty close. On the other hand, the fingerprint scanner was a nice surprise. It was really fast to get into the phone when using it, but the only thing is they seem to have overlooked how thick the phone is. Almost by default, it becomes a little bit of a stretch to reach it, but if you can do that, if you've got big hands, it's a really good fingerprint sensor. So, as you probably guessed by the price tag, this phone isn't packing the top of the line Snapdragon or Exynos CPU, but actually it has a MediaTek chip inside of it. It's got the MT6750, which is definitely an aging chip, but it manages to perform pretty well on this phone. And paired with 3 gigs of RAM, it seems to make short work of the OS. It's fluid, fast, and pretty good at multitasking too. But what was really reassuring is that the game performance was much better than expected. Considering the aging CPU, I was expecting to have problems with even sort of top-down games, but that wasn't the case here. Whilst we did run into some difficulties trying to play modern combat smoothly, what I did find was that this is almost a perfect tool for strategy games. It's got enough performance to play them properly, and enough battery so that you can literally take this out and forget about even bringing a battery pack. And when testing the internet, I kind of got the result I was expecting. It's pretty nippy, but at the same time noticeably slower than the current top-end flagships. But of course that is to be expected. So in terms of operating system, we're actually running a pretty stock version of Android 7.0. It looks a bit different because I put Nova Launcher on top because I didn't really like the stock launcher so much, but of course that's entirely personal preference. Now it's nice to see that we've got Android 7.0, but at the same time it's been a while now and 7.1 would have been a nice touch. Having said that, we've still got some nice additions with the OS. We've got an eye care mode in your quick settings menu, as well as quite a few settings to do with using gestures. Now to be honest, for the most part, they don't work well enough for them to be a useful tool, and they end up just being something to show your friends. Now in terms of storage, what is nice to see is that we've now been upgraded. We've gone from 16 to 32 gigs on this model, and we've also got room for a micro SD card, so no real complaints there. So then we've got the camera, and it actually took me quite a long time to decipher the actual specifications of this. Different places seem to say different things, but eventually we found out it's a 13 megapixel camera with an f2.2 aperture. So completely standard stuff on paper. But the few things worth bearing in mind are that first of all, it does that 13 megapixels justice. It does capture a good amount of detail. It's also good at getting natural colors. They're not desaturated, but at the same time, they're not oversaturated. It strikes a good balance between them. The lens allows you to get reasonably close to objects and still focus on them, but unfortunately, it's really poor at coping with HDR scenarios. You can see the same photo here and here looks entirely different depending on which object you actually focus on. The focus time was pretty quick, but unfortunately, the focus transition is a little bit jarring. 
Also, this 1080p video supposedly doesn't really look like 1080p. It's also a shame to see that the shutter time is just a little bit longer than I would have liked. There is a noticeable delay between clicking the photo and it actually saving on the camera roll. So guys, that's the Ukitel K10,000 Pro, and I'm fascinated by this device. On one hand, I'm so impressed that the company has been so bold as to create a design like this, to really innovate and actually create a phone that is genuinely the best in class. If you want battery life, there is no better place to get this. Having said that, as with most things, there is a compromise. This larger battery basically comes at the cost of size. It's a huge, huge phone, and that alone is going to be enough to put some people off. If you can get over that, then you've got to deal with the fact that there are similarly priced phones who can afford to be more powerful because they've saved their budget on battery. The camera really isn't great, but the design and the stunning build quality really make up for it. Thanks a lot for watching, I'm Mr. Who's the Boss, and I'm signing out.